I'm an accidental artist. It wasn't a dream of mine. I wasn't trying to be one. I was trying to work in a warehouse, trying to pull my life together after Hurricane Katrina had wrecked the house that I was renting and where I was living. And I started pulling hurricane debris out of the street and making things out of it. Mostly I needed furniture like a kitchen table and things like that. And um, people liked what I was making. There was an architect down the street who thought the kitchen table was so cool. He said, you know, if it didn't have legs on it, I'd put it on my wall. I thought he was crazier than me, but I did make him one. And then other architects wanted one too. So that's how I just slowly became an artist. I asked for a leave from my work in the warehouse to just spend a couple months in my backyard doing nothing but making things. And I was working under pretty primitive conditions, but I was really enjoying myself more than I was in the warehouse. And I'm still doing it. This show has more words in it than I've ever made before. It looks like sign painting. I love sign painting, but I'm not a real sign painter. I'm a fake sign painter. I just get it to look a certain way. But the magazine rack is probably like the most me thing. I mean, it's just me taken apart into a series of magazines. Like one is called Dope, you know, and one is called Angst for Teens, and one is called Drunk Animal Piece of Shit, which that used to be me. I mean, I don't drink anymore, but it's more than a magazine. Like, that's a way of life. So it's me and the story of my life just taken apart into pieces. And some of it's funny and some of it's just absolutely deplorable. And some of it's, you know, nothing to be proud of. I mean, I'm not doing this because I'm running for humanitarian of the year. Anyone who's looking for moral guidance from artists probably should examine their choices. Art is not a moral beauty contest. Sometimes people will ask, you know, what sort of response are you looking for from the viewer? And I'm stumped by the question because I remember once I made something that I thought was the most macabre thing I'd ever made. So morbid. The first person who walked into the gallery, and this was in New York, was an older woman. She looked at it and she burst into hysterical laughter. And she turned to me and she said, now that's funny. And I said, it is? And she said, that's really funny. And I said, oh, that's interesting. So I've learned that you could make something that you think is really morbid, just over the top, pathetically macabre, and someone will think it's hysterical. Or you could make something that you think is funny and someone else will cry. So I've completely given up any idea that I could guide the viewer towards any kind of response or feeling. Most of the time we make work and the world just kind of shrugs and moves on. I mean, I go out and look at art. Most of it, I don't think anything, and I don't feel anything either. So if they think something or they feel something, that's great.